Welcome to Hornbill TV. This is your anchor, Kekreza Nyasolo. You're now watching Nordis Express. Assam Governor Gulab Chant Kataria on Tuesday said that there have been more casualties this year in floods and large swaths have been affected. Officials say that 72 people died in the deluge of, as of July 8 and floods have devastated Assam, leaving millions displaced, causing extensive damage to roads and infrastructure. Governor Kataria told reporters after arriving at the Jaipur airport that a flood-like situation more or less persists in Assam every year. People are always prepared for this kind of situation because the region is always prone to floods owing to the Brahmaputra River and other smaller rivers. He also said that this time there have been more casualties and more area has been affected. Meanwhile, 137 wild animals, including six rhinos, have died in the Assam floods and Kaziranga National Park, officials said on Monday. The park authorities have managed to rescue 99 animals so far, including two rhino calves and two elephant calves. 70 forest camps out of 233 camps in the park have been submerged. Across 28 districts, over 27.74 lakh people have been displaced in the deluge. The situation of the forest is less than every year. This time, it is a little bit less. I have also seen the forest, but the people of the forest are a little bit older. The mind of the forest is a little bit older because there is a little bit older. ब्रह्मपुत्रा की बाढ़ का और उसकी जो जितनी भी छोटी-बड़ी नदियां हैं में रहती है पर इस बार जरूर ज्यादा हुई कैजुअलिटी भी ज्यादा हुई है एरिया भी ज्यादा इफेक्टेड रहा है पर सभी लोग मुख्यमंत्री भी मंत्री मंडल भी और मैं स्वयं भी बाढ़ एरिये को देखने भी गया लोगों को जो टेम्परेरी � अगर अपन चाहे जैसी व्यवस्था करें तो स्वीकार नहीं करते हैं पर वो बिल्कुल सड़क पे भी अगर टेंट लगा दोगे तो भी उसको अपने बच्चों के साथ बहुत रहते हैं तो पब्लिक का भी सपोर्ट रहता है और सरकार का भी रहता है और केंद्र सरकार ने भी खुले मन से मुख्यमंत्री जो क्या रखा है कि हमारी तरफ से जो भी सहयोग आप चाहते हो सब मिलेगा Manipur Police and Security Forces reported success against armed militants following a gunfight on Monday evening between Tamenglong and Juribam district. A morning bulletin released on Tuesday detailed how security forces, including the 39 Assam rifles, responded to reports of the gunfire near the villages of Paitol Tamenglong and Laigangpokpi, Juribam. Six militants managed to escape the ensuing search operation, but security forces recovered a significant cache of weapons and supplies. The firearms included a locally made 303 rifle, two single barrel rifles and a local 12 bore rifle. Two country made 32 mm pistols with magazines were also seized. Moving to explosives, the security forces found seven pompey bombs, five handmade explosive devices, five vials of gunpowder and five detonators and also additionally they recovered 23 empty 12 bore cartridges and five meters of safety fuse wire. The seized equipment included two rifle slings, six walkie-talkie chargers, three bulletproof jackets and two iron plates, presumably for additional ballistic protection. Two combat uniforms were also seized, a pair of hunting shoes and two pairs of jungle boots rounded out of the military gear. For communication, the militants possessed a loaded Pompey gun, potentially a flare gun and a Motorola walkie-talkie. Other items included two helmets, two slingshots, two flashlights and six mobile phones chargers. Finally, the security forces also seized a miscellaneous collection including a waist belt, a base baseball cap, an extension cord, a switchboard, a laptop with a mouse, three smartphones, a keypad phone and a power bank. They also found 247 life rounds of ammunition, a single 200 rupee note and 50 pieces of metal shrapnel. The report stated that the seized items have been handed over to the police for investigation and legal proceedings. In a recent search operation against human trafficking, Guwahati police successfully rescued two girls from a brothel in Bihar. Four persons have been arrested in this connection and the arrested persons have been identified as Tanvir Alom of Gulab Bagh Zero Mile, Yunya Bihar, Idrish Ali, a resident of Strata Korana Bagh Bar Barpeta, Khairun Nesa, a resident of Panjipara, Haskunda, Uttar Pradesh, Uttar Dinajpur, West Bengal and Sikandar Ali from Fatasil Ambari, Guwahati. According to a complaint lodged at Bhaknapar, 
police station, two girls have been missing since June 29, and the mother of one of the girls reported that her 18-year-old daughter had been insisting on getting a new mobile phone. After the family refused her request, she went to the house of another girl and both subsequently went missing. City Police Commissioner Dijanta Bara stated in an official statement that during the investigation, someone called a brother of one of the victims, demanding rupees 30,000 for her release. The call was traced to Purnia Bihar, which helped the police locate and rescue the girls. The victim girls were planning to go to Delhi when Sikandar Ali met them at Paltan Bazar railway station. And he also convinced them that he would help them reach Delhi, but instead handed them over to Idrish Ali Basista. Idrish Ali and his wife, Bapli, in collaboration with Kairun Nesa from Panjipara, West Bengal, took the girls to Siliguri by bus and sold them off to Akbor of Panjipara Bihar for Rs. 1,10,000. Akbor then handed over the girls to Tanvir Alom, who forced them to work in a brothel in Rauta Bihar, he said. Having found sufficient evidence against the accused persons involved in the crimes, police subsequently arrested Idrish Ali from Pilin Kata Pasista and Sikandar Ali from Paltan Bazar Railway Station. Further investigation is ongoing to arrest Idrish Ali's wife, who is currently absconding. The first kidney transplant procedure was performed successfully at GBP Hospital Agartala. Medical teams of Shija Hospital Manipur and GBP Hospital Agartala were involved in the five hours long complex surgery. Medical Superintendent of GBP Hospital Agartala, Shankar Chakraborty, told media persons in a press briefing held shortly after the operation was completed. Chakraborty relieved that the two hospitals inked at memorandum of understanding earlier, according to which the Shija Hospital will mentor the GBP hospital doctors for a period of five years. A mother donated her kidney to her ailing son and the operation was conducted free of cost. The state government borne the whole expenses, which included flight fares, accommodation and a token of Honorarium of the team of 12 doctors that came from Manipur based Shija Hospital and Research Center. Apart from that, rupees 88 lakh were spent for installation of the equipment which is required for kidney transplantation. And after Assam and Manipur, Tripura is the third state in the Northeast which has successfully conducted the operation. So, so at the discussion, uh, so in our center, we charge six lakhs for people. Uh, for kidney transplantation, and incidentally, in our hospital, it is re partially reimbursed by the CM, uh, CM scheme as well as the PMGY scheme. So, the, according to the amount which is reimbursed by the scheme, patients get benefit of that. So, it will come to roughly come to about three and a half to four lakhs uh, out of the pocket of the patient. See, the success rate regarding patient survival immediately post transplant is 100 percent. Kidney transplant, the, the graph surviving for more than one year will be more than 97 to 98 percent. How many already? We have, we have done 114 kidney transplants till now. It, we, every patient transplant center will have uh, patients dying after a few uh, few periods. So patients can have infection or they can have heart attack or stroke. We have lost patients like that, a few of, a few of the patients, which is predictable. But as such, our kidney transplant centers have got outcomes which is comparable to the rest of the country. So, in Manipur, I will talk about Manipur first. In Manipur, we were the first center to start a kidney transplantation. We have been doing since August 2016. Genims is a government hospital in Manipur. They have started for the past two years now. And in the other states, Assam has been doing since way back in 1991. But uh, 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 since 1991, they're, they're doing, the government hospital is doing. I think the international hospital now, which is uh, Apollo Hospitals, is doing, and separate private hospitals are doing right now. Living donor organ transplantation, kidney. We are very much uh, having satisfaction that we can do the procedures with under the mentorship of CJT. I would like to thank. We would like to thank to our honourable Chief Minister. Sri Manik Shah, sir, for taking the initiative to start organ transplantation at AGM CNGBPH. I would also like to thank to our sir, MS sir, our principal sir, 
DME sir and Director of Health Service sir for taking all the initiative to give all the licenses to carry out the procedures to give all the manpower infrastructure required to undergo the procedure. Armed Police Training Center at the 6th Battalion of the Meghalaya Police in Umran hosted the passing out parade for the fourth batch of unarmed branch recruit constables on Tuesday. Meghalaya Director General of Police Idashisha Nongrang attended as the chief guest along with other senior officers and family members of the recruits. DGP Nongrang congratulated the 104 new constables for completing their basic training and welcomed them into the Meghalaya Police family. She praised their achievements and encouraged them to continue striving for excellence and also commended the training centre and instructors for their hard work and dedication. Highlighting the comprehensive training provided, she reminded the recruits to apply their knowledge and skills in their duties and how to make choices aligned with their principles. She also acknowledged the growing challenges faced by the Meghalaya police and emphasised the importance of discipline and adaptability. The event marked a significant milestone for the new constable as they began their careers in serving the state and its people. As you pass out today, you have for you an unblemished record. There are some amongst you who have won prizes. This should be taken as an inspiration and as an indication that you have many more prizes to win. For those who have not, let's assure that there will be umpteen opportunities for you to win prizes and laurels for the mega Police, for yourselves and for your country. I take this opportunity to congratulate the Armed Police Training Center and all the instructors who have obviously done, put in a lot of effort to ensure that these 104 constables and the six, or is it eight, seven followers who, have, who are part of this parade today have done so exceedingly well. They are a reflection of all the art, of the, of all the hard work and dedication to duty that you as instructors have imparted into them. As stated by the commander in this report, a number of subjects have been touched upon and you have been given the opportunity to learn about various things. As you step up, our thanks and gratitude for your kind and gracious presence on this joyous occasion. I have witnessed the passing out parade of the fourth batch of recruit constables at Armed Police Training Center, 6th Battalion. Ma'am, ladies and gentlemen, the 6th Battalion of Meghalaya Police was established on the 20th of January 2011 and shifted to its permanent campus at Umran in the year 2018. Though we are relatively a new and recent unit, the contributions of Armed Police Training Center and 6th Battalion overall speak for itself. Since its inception, the Armed Police Training Center of 6th Battalion has successfully trained four batches of recruit constables including the Newly elected members of the parliament for the SC Reserve Lok Sabha seat of Silcha Parimal Suklabaidia visited flood affected villages and refugees, taking refugee in a various relief camps of Katigora constituency and the Gajar district of Assam on Monday. Suklabaidia took stock of the relief and essential materials supplied to these victims. He also checked upon the stocks for food items, baby foods, medicines, potable drinking water, food for domesticated animals and also spoke at land with the flood victims of this region. Hoping on a boat, MP Suklabaidia visited Narpati Kalibari under Lever Puta Gau Panchayat, Salimabad, Amtala areas which were badly affected due to the floods in Kachar district this time. Tripura Chief Minister Prof. Dr. Manik Saha on Monday said that he will speak with senior leaders in centre to introduce the Smart City Mission Project 2.0 to carry out more development works in the state. Dr. Saha said this after laying the foundation stones for the development and beautification of Shiv Bari Pond on Central Road, a lake in Ujan Abhoynagar and the Veterinary Hospital Lake under the Amrut 2.0 scheme. Saha further mentioned that people visited from visiting from outside are impressed by the development in Tripura and state that they do not want to politicize development. Chief Minister also expressed that people will always remember Prime Minister Narendra Modi for his developmental work.
ট্যাব উপর যত 500 করোর দেওয়া হয়েছে কিন্তু এটা কিন্তু মানে 2.0 বলে আর কিছু নেই তো আমি ওনাকে বললাম যে আমাকে দিন যাতে আরো কারণ স্মার্ট সিটির মাধ্যমে কিন্তু আমরা অনেক কিছু ডেভেলপ করেছি বিভিন্ন জায়গায় তো এটা যদি আমরা দিল্লিতে আমাদের যারা নেতৃত্বরা আছেন তাদের সাথে আমি কথা বলবো নিশ্চয়ই সেখানে আমরা এই আমরা 2.0 যেরকম আছে তো ওয়াই নট দ্য স্মার্ট সিটি 2.0 সেটা আমরা করতে পারি তাহলে আমাদের আগামী দিনে আরো যেসব ডেভেলপমেন্টের ওয়ার্ক সেটা করা যাবে আমার এখানে গত পরশু দিন প্রায় একুশ বছর পরে ওরা হাজব্যান্ড অ্যান্ড ওয়াইফ দুজনে ডাক্তার একুশ বছর পরে আমার আগরতলাতে এসছে এখান থেকে মাথা বাড়িতে গেছে মেসেজ করেছে প্রথমে ফোন করেছে আমি বুঝতে পারিনি কারণ অনেক ফোন আসে বুঝেও যায় মেসেজটা দেখতে গিয়ে দেখলাম যে পরিচয়টা আমি বুঝে গেলি বলে আপনার সাথে আমরা এলাম আপনার সাথে একটু দেখা করতে চাই আমি সময় দিলাম কারণ ওরা ওই দিনে এই সেম ফ্লাইটে পরশু দিনের ফ্লাইটে বিকালের ফ্লাইটে চলে যাবে আমি একটা বললাম যে আসুন এসে বলছে যে একুশ বছর পর আমরা আগরতলাতে আর এই সেই উদয়পুরের যে রাস্তা আমরা দেখলাম যে আসা যাওয়ার মধ্যে মানে দেড় ঘন্টার মধ্যে আমাদের কাজ শেষ মানে ভাবতে পারি না এবং এত সুন্দর হয়েছে যে আমরা কলকাতায় ওনারা প্র্যাকটিস করেন থাকেন ওখানে বিভিন্ন জায়গায় যান তো আগরতলাকে ওই আগের মতোই ওরা ভেবে নিয়েছে বা ত্রিপুরাকে আগের মতোই ভেবে নিয়েছে যে এই রকমই আছে আমরা বাড়িতেও যদি ছোট একটা বাচ্চা থাকে এ বড় হচ্ছে কিনা আমরা কিন্তু যেহেতু রোজ দেখি আমরা বুঝতে পারি না অনেক দিন বাদে যখন আসে তখন বুঝতে পারে যে কি ছিল আর কি ইন অল অ্যাসপেক্ট ইন অল ডাইমেনশন আজকে আইন শৃঙ্খলার কথাই বলুন এখানে সৌন্দর্যায়নের কথাই বলুন ডেভেলপমেন্টের কথাই বলুন একের পর এক আমরা ডেভেলপমেন্ট করে চলছি কারণ মোদিজি ডেভেলপ ছাড়া কোনো কথা বলেন না উন্নয়ন ছাড়া কোনো কথা নেই আমরাও সেই দিশায় উন্নয়ন ছাড়া কথা বলি Rat Yatra of Sri Sri Govindaji Temple Board was celebrated in Loki manner and the tight security at Govindaji Temple Palace compound on Monday followed by a short procession of the chariot Earlier unknown miscreants fired two rounds at the Rat Yatra chariot on Friday due to which fewer devotees showed up in the procession as per the ritual of the ceremony fruits flowers and other offerings were presented to the three lords jagannath balabhadra and subhadra at govindaji temple by the priests later the devotees took the three lords out of the procession on the rath which was drawn by a minimal number of devotees along palace gate route as a tradition the chariot was drawn from its starting point to the palace gate This time it took a U-turn from the AIR gate which is around 50 meters from the starting position. Despite the low turnout, the priests and the traditional orchestra with pang, cholom and cymbals performed, uh, us- performed as usual and the Rath Yatra was led by Manipur Rifles music band. Locals and non-locals participated in the procession and a similar celebration was also seen at SKCON Temple, Sangai Prut Imphal, and the celebration of iskon manipur mandir was toned down with the rath remaining inside the campus unlike other times no other small kang or rath yatra processions were seen in the streets the supreme court on tuesday did not agree to give an open court hearing on the review petition challenging the top court judgment that refused to legally recognize Same sex and queer marriage a bench headed by Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachud said that the constitution bench review is heard not in the open court but in chambers the apex court's clarification ca- came when petitioners mentioned the review petition challenging the same sex marriage judgment dated October 17 2023 before the supreme court and urged for an open hearing The review petition was mentioned by senior advocate N.K. Cole urging the top court for an open hearing on a plea seeking legal recognition of same-sex and queer marriage under the Special Marriage Act 1954. Foreign Marriage Act 1969, Citizenship Act 1955, the Common Law and other existing legislations. 
The Supreme Court will hear the review petition on July 10. A five-judge bench headed by Just Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachud will hear the petition. The other four judges on the bench are Justices Sanjeev Khanna, Hima Kohli, B.V. Nagaratna and P.S. Narsima. Justices A.K. Paul and S. Ravinder Bhatt, who have retired from the bench, have been replaced by Justice Sanjeev Khanna and B.V. Nagaratna. And various review petitions have been filed in the Supreme Court challenging the top court judgment, which declined marriage equality right to queer couples. On the review petition has been filed through advocates Karuna Nandi and Ruchira Goyal, which sought to review the majority judgment dated October 17, 2023, passed by the top court, which rejected a batch of petition seeking legal recognition of same-sex and queer marriage. The top court delivered four separate judgments dated October 17, 2023. The majority judgment was delivered by Justices S. R. Bhatt, Hima Kohli and P. S. Narsima. Chief Justice of India D. Y. Chandrachud and Justice S. K. Kohl have delivered minority judgments. That's all for now. For more news, keep watching Hornbill TV.